What's up, everyone? Once again, my name is Man, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. In the last episode, we talked with Prince Kamali a bit, and then followed Medley into Dragon Roost Cavern. In this episode, well, we're gonna start, I guess you could call this the second dungeon of the game, if you count the Forsaken Fortress as the first, but... As you can imagine, this is going to be much larger than the Forsaken Fortress. We've got four floors to go through this time, and along the way we need to keep our eye out for four small keys and two treasure charts. Now, there are no pieces of heart this time around, so at least we don't have to worry about those. I'm gonna try and be cool here and, well, never mind. I was gonna try and throw this stick to light both torches, like just by the flame, like flying through them. You normally can do that, but I'm apparently not skilled enough and thus, my dreams of becoming a speedrunner for this game have now died. Anyways, we've now found our first small key, and we can use that to actually get into the main dungeon. And uh, right through here, we're going to enter what I like to call the main hub of this dungeon. Now, a lot of dungeons in Zelda, and especially in Wind Waker, have a room sort of like this, where it exists across multiple floors, and it provides a sort of a central hub to every area of the dungeon so it's in your best interest to sort of you know get familiar with this area because we'll definitely be seeing it from all sorts of different angles uh as we go through here and i know i said i was going to keep this to a minimal but i mean just look at the way the lighting like hits link from those lava spires like the inside of this area looks absolutely amazing on the hd remake the outside well i've got a few issues with the outside but we'll worry about that later is that bad going to attack me he's like flying casually towards me there he goes all right get out of here it was really weird though like he's just like flying straight at me but not doing anything and that rupee actually has some weight to it i just noticed that it was like weighing down the bridge that's actually really interesting i'm surprised they added weight to like the rupees that's kind of cool and it's like the little details like that that really make me love wind waker and make it my favorite zelda game Anyways, in this room, we got one of my favorite puzzles. So basically, we grab these giant water jugs, chuck them into lava, and they become obsidian platforms. Over here, we have a chest, and inside, I believe, if my memory serves me well, this is going to be the dungeon map. Ah, yes, indeed it is. Sweet. Haven't forgotten this game completely yet. Alright, so let's grab another one of these jugs and hop over to the other side now. I really do like this, uh, throwing the water into the lava thing, like, making the two elements interact with each other is, like, really, really cool, and they use that puzzle, or that element a lot in this dungeon, so, that's fine by me. Alright, now, Chu, could you jump down at me and cam- whoa, camera, what are you doing right now? I think if I climb this ladder, this Chu jumps down, so... Okay, cool, he jumped over me, you know what, that'll work, I'll just ignore him and we'll just move on then. Now, in this next room, you're gonna wanna get your sword ready, because... There is an enemy hiding out in that pot, and we need to kill him because we need his weapon. And that introduces a new mechanic in Wind Waker that I actually like a lot. So enemies can sometimes drop their weapons when they die, or you can knock it out of their hand when you're attacking them. Ooh, a joy pendant. Um, and then you can pick up their weapons, and sometimes uh, their weapons will be more powerful than yours, and you'll need them to sort of like solve a puzzle like this. We can use this guy's sword to bash through these thick wooden planks. We can also throw it across the room to bash through the planks from over there. And uh, let me see if I can do this, actually. These shoes are going to drop down. I want to, like, spin attack while they're jumping at me. Well, okay, it worked for one of them. Kind of wanted to get both of them there, but whatever. Still did it. Okay, so what's going to be inside this chest? We have another small key. I believe that is the second one we've found so far. It's always a good idea to keep track of how many small keys... Um, you found, especially since we know that there are four total in this dungeon. And dang, that was awesome. I hit the A button at, like, the perfect time there. I would like to say that I did that on purpose, but to be completely honest, that was a complete accident. <laughs> Alright, now, right over here, as you can see, we are back in the hub room of this dungeon. And this rock is sort of blocking our way. It actually leads back to where we first entered. So, if we throw that pot at the bombs, well, we sort of create a shortcut back to the beginning. And now that we have this small key... We can open up that locked door that we saw at the beginning. Isn't that just dandy how it all sort of works like that? Hooray! Now, we can't go off to our right just yet because we don't have the item from this temple. So instead, we'll have to keep moving forward and just take out a few of these uh, red shoes. You know, I think actually there was a um, spot for the Tingle Tuner in the original uh, GameCube version of this game towards the right, but... 
Ooh, another joy pendant. I'm probably sure they took that out because there is no tingle tuner now in this game. Uh, since we don't have any powerful weapons, we can actually just light these on fire with the Deku stick. Revealing this switch, which when activated, of course, opens up that door. And this will take us to the outside of the temple. And I guess while we're out here, I'll talk about why I do have some issues with the HD remake of this game. Because I'm sure as you can probably tell, it's pretty bright out here because of all the bloom that they added. And if you look on the horizon, you can see like the blue ocean, which just meshes with the blue sky. And overall, it just, it doesn't look as bright as it could be if you ask me. Because Wind Waker is supposed to be like this really bright, vibrant, happy looking game. And I don't know, I think it just looks kind of dull with all the bloom that they added. Like it doesn't seem as bright as it could be. Anyways, we got a new type of enemy right here. Um, I don't remember the official name, but they do drop golden feathers. Golden feathers are going to be important for a side quest a lot later on in the game. I believe we need either 20 or 40 of them. I think it's 20. So just keep an eye out for those and uh, pick them up when you can. Don't worry about missing a few though because um, later on in the game there's actually an area where you can farm for them if you missed out. And we'll probably end up doing that for now. Let's just go across this wall and try and not get burned by lava. Sounds like a good idea to me. Now look at this giant boulder, man. I mean, just look at it. It's just sitting right in the way of where we need to go. So, what we're going to do is grab onto this wooden platform and uh, shimmy our way all the way to the other side. Because up over here we have ourselves a bomb flower. We're going to use that to blow up this giant rock. That way we can actually, you know, progress through this dungeon so long rock it was nice knowing you and okay wow that actually didn't even work all right give me another bomb and let's try that again cuz uh, this is pretty stupid <laughs> I don't even know how that didn't work the first time but there we go now we got to see it's not even that hard I don't know how I messed it up. it must have, like bounced off the rock and uh just moved ever so slightly out of the um, explosion radius all right, now in here we got ourselves a block puzzle, but before we solve that, instead what I'm going to do is pull these two blocks out just a little bit because there's actually a secret back here. If I can actually get the camera to cooperate, you might notice this, but there is indeed a hole that Link can crawl into, and uh, in here you'll just grab yourself a few extra rupees. I'll switch into first person, that way we can see it a little bit better. But it's really nothing too special, it's just a really quick, short secret to get like... 20 or 30 rupees or something like that honestly if you miss it it's not really that big of a deal but I figured I'd show it off because you know a lot of people just seem to like walk right past that secret and not even show it off and so I knew it's there you know I figured why not we'll go for it this block puzzle is really easy by the way all I have to do is finish pulling out those blocks and then you're done and you can make your way to the top in the next area Ooh, now in here we have rats now personally I find the rats in this game really really annoying oh hang on we got ourselves a phone call coming in. Link, have you seen any filthy thieving rats around? I know they're annoying, but keep your wits about you. They are only rats. If you spread bait near the nest, they may share their store of treasure with you. Why don't you try it out? Uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but I like the King of Lines was saying, if you spread the all-purpose bait near the hole where the rats come out, I believe these rats will actually sell stuff to you. So I, I think you can actually buy more all-purpose bait from them, but we're not even going to bother with that instead. We're going to go and open this chest. Oh, yeah, I forgot. By the way, the rats can actually attack you and take your rupees. So they're like, they're not completely neutral enemies. They're sort of hostile, I guess, if you attack them. But I think if you spread the bait out, they become neutral again. Not entirely sure on that. Anyways, let's open up this chest. And I believe this will contain the second normal temple item, which, of course, will be the compass. So all that we have left now is the special temple item, which we'll get a little bit later for now. Let's light this stick on fire, and then chuck it across this room. Dang, Link has a really strong arm. And behind those wooden planks is actually another treasure chest. Let's find out what's inside this one. Actually, I believe this one is just a, uh, yep, a small key. There we go. We actually needed that small key to get out of this room, so that was good. <laughs> I just rolled into a ladder. All right, then. Let's just uh, pretend we didn't see that, all right? We'll just move on, and uh, I'm sure it's fine. 
right through here. This will actually take us back outside the dungeon again, so that's nice. I mean, we got some fresh air. You don't want to be in the dungeon too long. It's all dank and dusty in there. You'll probably get, like, asbestos or something. That's definitely not good for the hero of this game. Now, right over here, we probably have the easiest key to ever collect in Zelda history. It's literally just sitting on the ground under this bird. So, let's lure him over here. That way, if he does uh, drop a golden feather when he dies, we'll be able to collect that. And what's it going to be? A green rupee. Great. Thanks for that, dude. Amazing. Alright, let's just go and grab this key. Now, I know there's a lot of space in this outcropping, but I can't help but be cautious because, like... If I accidentally, like, rolled or something, I would've just fallen off there and this whole area would've reset. Ooh, five rupees. I will definitely take that. And oh no, it's all dark and spooky in here. Ooh, what are we gonna do? Well, we can actually take one of these Deku Sticks, light on fire, and use as a torch going through here. We're actually gonna want to keep this Deku Stick all the way to the end. I like when you light the torch in the center on fire, the bats go up to the ceiling because, like, the light and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And I mean, look at these bats, man. They're freaking huge. They're like half the size of Link. I also like that they're like really, really detailed on the HD version of the game, too. I don't know. I just think it's kind of funny that they put like that much time into the bats. Ooh, we got ourselves another joy pen. It isn't that just dandy. That's like one of those optional treasure chests that you really don't have to get, but you can if you want to. Aw, my Deku stick ran out. Well, thankfully they don't burn completely in this game, so we can just reignite it. Come over here, light these two torches. And that'll open up this door. Now, I believe there's, yeah, there's nothing else in this area. So, let's just head on through here. And we've essentially reached the halfway point because there's another one of these pots here. There was one at the beginning of this dungeon. I don't think I pointed that out, but uh, these are teleportation pots. So, if we blow up this one and we jumped in it, this would actually take us back towards the beginning of the dungeon. There's three total in the dungeons. There's one at the beginning, one in the middle, and usually one right before the boss door. So you can use those as sort of like quick save checkpoints. But now that we got here, I think that's where I'm going to call the episode. So if you enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.